Welcome to day 53 of our one-year Bible reading plan. Today we'll read Deuteronomy chapters 3 through 4. Before you begin, remember that it helps to establish a daily reading time. Begin with a short prayer, asking the Holy Spirit for wisdom and understanding. Always read for understanding and to hear from God, not just to finish today's reading. Please like, subscribe, and share this video to bless someone else. Now let's begin. Deuteronomy chapter 3, verse 1. Next we turned and went up along the road toward Bashan, and Og king of Bashan with his whole army marched out to meet us in battle at Edre. The Lord said to me, Do not be afraid of him, for I have delivered him into your hands, along with his whole army and his land. Do to him what you did to Sion king of the Amorites, who reigned in Heshbon. So the Lord our God also gave into our hands Og king of Bashan and all his army. We struck them down, leaving no survivors. At that time we took all his cities. There was not one of the sixty cities that we did not take from them, the whole region of Argob, Og's kingdom in Bashan. All these cities were fortified with high walls and with gates and bars, and there were also a great many unwalled villages. We completely destroyed them, as we had done with Sihon king of Heshbon, destroying every city, men, women, and children. But all the livestock and the plunder from their cities we carried off for ourselves. So at that time we took from these two kings of the Amorites the territory east of the Jordan, from the Arnon Gorge as far as Mount Hermon. Hermon is called Syrian by the Sidonians, the Amorites call it Senir. Verse 10. We took all the towns on the plateau, and all Gilead and all Bashan as far as Seleca and Edre, towns of Og's kingdom in Bashan. Og king of Bashan was the last of the Rephaites. His bed was decorated with iron, and was more than nine cubits long and four cubits wide. It is still in Rabah of the Ammonites. Of the land that we took over at that time, I gave the Reubenites and the Gadites the territory north of Aroa by the Arnon Gorge, including half the hill country of Gilead, together with its towns. The rest of Gilead and also all of Bashan, the kingdom of Og, I gave to the half-tribe of Manasseh. The whole region of Argob in Bashan used to be known as a land of the Rephaites. Jair, a descendant of Manasseh, took the whole region of Argob as far as the border of the Geshurites and the Marcathites. It was named after him, so that to this day Bashan is called Havoth Jair. And I gave Gilead to Machir. But to the Reubenites and the Gadites, I gave the territory extending from Gilead down to the Arnon Gorge, the middle of the gorge being the border, and out to the Jabbok River, which is the border of the Ammonites. Its western border was the Jordan in the Arabah from Kinnereth to the Sea of the Araba, that is, the Dead Sea, below the slopes of Pisgah. I commanded you at that time, the Lord your God has given you this land to take possession of it. But all your able-bodied men armed for battle must cross over ahead of the other Israelites. However, your wives, your children, and your livestock, I know you have much livestock, may stay in the towns I have given you. Verse 20, until the Lord gives rest to your fellow Israelites as he has to you, and they too have taken over the land that the Lord your God is giving them across the Jordan. After that, each of you may go back to the possession I have given you. At that time I commanded Joshua, You have seen with your own eyes all that the Lord your God has done to these two kings. The Lord will do the same to all the kingdoms over there where you are going. Do not be afraid of them. The Lord your God himself will fight for you. At that time I pleaded with the Lord, Sovereign Lord, you have begun to show to your servant your greatness and your strong hand. For what God is there in heaven or on earth who can do the deeds and mighty works you do? Let me go over and see the good land beyond the Jordan, that fine hill country and Lebanon. But because of you the Lord was angry with me and would not listen to me. That is enough, the Lord said. Do not speak to me any more about this matter. Go up to the top of Pisgah and look west and north and south and east. Look at the land with your own eyes, since you are not going to cross this Jordan. But commission Joshua, and encourage and strengthen him, for he will lead this people across, and will cause them to inherit the land that you will see. So we stayed in the valley near Beth Peor. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 1. Now Israel, hear the decrees and laws I am about to teach you. Follow them so that you may live and may go in and take possession of the land the Lord, the God of your ancestors, is giving you. Do not add to what I command you, and do not subtract from it. But keep the commands of the Lord your God that I give you. You saw with your own eyes what the Lord did at Baal Peor. 
the Lord your God destroyed from among you everyone who followed the Baal of Peor. But all of you who held fast to the Lord your God are still alive today. See, I have taught you decrees and laws as the Lord my God commanded me, so that you may follow them in the land you are entering to take possession of it. Observe them carefully, for this will show your wisdom and understanding to the nations who will hear about all these decrees and say, Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. What other nation is so great as to have their gods near them the way the Lord our God is near us whenever we pray to him? And what other nation is so great as to have such righteous decrees and laws as this body of laws I am setting before you today? Only be careful and watch yourselves closely so that you do not forget the things your eyes have seen or let them fade from your heart as long as you live. Teach them to your children and to their children after them. Verse 10. Remember the day you stood before the Lord your God at Horeb, when he said to me, Assemble the people before me to hear my words, so that they may learn to revere me, as long as they live in the land, and may teach them to their children. You came near and stood at the foot of the mountain, while it blazed with fire to the very heavens, with black clouds and deep darkness. Then the Lord spoke to you out of the fire. You heard the sound of words but saw no form. There was only a voice. He declared to you his covenant, the Ten Commandments, which he commanded you to follow, and then wrote them on two stone tablets. And the Lord directed me at that time to teach you the decrees and laws you are to follow in the land that you are crossing the Jordan to possess. You saw no form of any kind the day the Lord spoke to you at Horeb out of the fire. Therefore watch yourselves very carefully, so that you do not become corrupt and make for yourselves an idol, an image of any shape, whether formed like a man or a woman, or like any animal on earth, or any bird that flies in the air, or like any creature that moves along the ground, or any fish in the waters below. And when you look up to the sky and see the sun, the moon and the stars, all the heavenly array, do not be enticed into bowing down to them and worshipping things the Lord your God has apportioned to all the nations under heaven. Verse 20. But as for you, the Lord took you and brought you out of the iron smelting furnace, out of Egypt, to be the people of his inheritance as you now are. The Lord was angry with me because of you, and he solemnly swore that I would not cross the Jordan and enter the good land the Lord your God is giving you as your inheritance. I will die in this land. I will not cross the Jordan, but you are about to cross over and take possession of that good land. Be careful not to forget the covenant of the Lord your God that he made with you. Do not make for yourselves an idol in the form of anything the Lord your God has forbidden. For the Lord your God is a consuming fire, a jealous God. After you have had children and grandchildren and have lived in the land a long time, if you then become corrupt and make any kind of idol, doing evil in the eyes of the Lord your God and arousing his anger, I call the heavens and the earth as witnesses against you this day that you will quickly perish from the land that you are crossing the Jordan to possess. You will not live there long but will certainly be destroyed. The Lord will scatter you among the peoples and only a few of you will survive among the nations to which the Lord will drive you. There you will worship man-made gods of wood and stone, which cannot see, or hear, or eat, or smell. But if from there you seek the Lord your God, you will find him if you seek him with all your heart and with all your soul. Verse 30. When you are in distress and all these things have happened to you, then in later days you will return to the Lord your God and obey him. For the Lord, your God is a merciful God. He will not abandon or destroy you or forget the covenant with your ancestors, which he confirmed to them by oath. Ask now about the former days, long before your time, from the day God created human beings on the earth. Ask from one end of the heavens to the other. Has anything so great as this ever happened? Or has anything like it ever been heard of? Has any other people heard the voice of God speaking out of fire as you have and lived? Has any God ever tried to take for himself one nation out of another nation by testings, by signs and wonders, by war, by a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, or by great and awesome deeds, like all the things the Lord your God did for you in Egypt before your very eyes? You were shown these things so that you might know that the Lord is God. Besides him, there is no other. From heaven he made you hear his voice to discipline you, on earth he showed you his great fire, and you heard his words from out of the fire. 
because he loved your ancestors and chose their descendants after them, he brought you out of Egypt by his presence and his great strength to drive out before you nations greater and stronger than you and to bring you into their land to give it to you for your inheritance as it is today. Acknowledge and take to heart this day that the Lord is God in heaven above and on the earth below. There is no other. Verse 40. Keep his decrees and commands which I am giving you today so that it may go well with you and your children after you and that you may live long in the land the Lord your God gives you for all time. Then Moses set aside three cities east of the Jordan, to which anyone who had killed a person could flee if they had unintentionally killed a neighbor without malice aforethought. They could flee into one of these cities and save their life. The cities were these, Bezer in the wilderness plateau for the Reubenites, Ramoth in Gilead for the Gadites, and Golan in Bashan for the Manassites. This is the law Moses set before the Israelites. These are the stipulations, decrees, and laws Moses gave them when they came out of Egypt and were in the valley near Beth Peor, east of the Jordan, in the land of Sihon king of the Amorites, who reigned in Heshbon and was defeated by Moses and the Israelites as they came out of Egypt. They took possession of his land and the land of Og king of Bashan, the two Amorite kings east of the Jordan. This land extended from Aror on the rim of the Arnon Gorge to Mount Sirion, that is, Hermon, and included all the Araba east of the Jordan, as far as the Dead Sea, below the slopes of Pisgah. This concludes Deuteronomy chapters 3 through 4 for day 53. We hope you are enjoying these daily videos. Remember to check the description box for links and resources. Thank you for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. Your support helps spread God's word to reach more people on YouTube. We'll see you in the next video for our day 54 reading.